I'm Dr. Steven Dominguez and today we're going to talk about why do I have a strong appetite? You know, our appetite is determined by processes that occur both in the brain and the gastrointestinal tract. It's these processes that are determined by a number of molecules that are produced by our cells in the abdom abdomen, abdominal fat, by the stomach, the intestine, and the brain that further control the process of stimulating or suppressing your appetite. Now, in some cases, there may be some genetic factors that produce chemical imbalances. These chemicals could be insulin, leptin, resistin, and ghrelin. When these combine with the other proteins that you've already heard about in the previous lectures, we know that these consequences can be quite disastrous. So, other proteins that are important that you probably have heard of, melanocortins, neuropeptide Y, peptide Y, Y, Y. A goody related protein, melanocyte stimulating hormone, endorphins, cholecystokinin, and of course the ubiquitous endocannabinoid system. It's really important. If you haven't heard that lecture, you should go see it. Now, let's talk about insulin. Insulin is a critical hormone. It's important in the conversion of blood sugar or, sh or glucose into energy. Insulin enables the glucose and other amino acids to enter the cells of the body, most importantly, those in muscles. This is where the consumption occurs. This is where you want insulin and glucose to work, in the muscle, not to be converted into fat. Insulin and these other hormones directly work to burn your nutrients or store them as energy in fat. The inability to use insulin efficiently is known as insulin resistance. Now this is what's associated with obesity and ultimately diabetes. So insulin is critical, insulin is important. Leptin. Leptin is a hormone that is released by fat cells abdominal, and possibly by some cells in the stomach. It plays just as an important role as insulin, in insulin resistance and in fat storage. So now we have two, we have insulin and we have leptin, two critically important hormones that will affect your deposition or burn of fat. This is important because as leptin levels rise, more fat is stored. More fat is stored, leptin rises. So. As leptin falls, it signals the brain to what? Stimulate your appetite. Do you follow that? Let's talk about resistin. Resistin is another hormone that's produced by abdominal fat cells that also results in fat accumulation. Let's talk about some of these others you may be hearing about. Ghrelin, glucagon-like peptide 1, peptide YY3-36. These are academic proteins that are important to you in an academic center. There's not much you can do about them. These are known as satiety proteins. They stimulate the fullness and hunger centers in the brain. They are important. I'm not poo-pooing them, but listen, if we're going to choose one today to talk about in more detail, it's going to be the endocannabinoid protein receptors because these are ubiquitous. They are located in your brain, your fat tissue, your liver, your muscle. Basically, any metabolically important organ has the endocannabinoid protein receptors. It's these receptors that when they get stimulated, you feel good. You feel good, you eat more. Remember that lecture? Okay. Now, you're, now, we're, now we're on the same page. These are all metabolically active proteins. They all interact together. They're like a hand and a glove. They fit. They accelerate each other. They accelerate your fat storage, not your fat burn. It's a geometrically increasing phenomenon. It's not linear. It's not one plus one plus one. Okay, it's one plus one times three times four, resulting in fat storage. Now, let's put it all together again. Multiple proteins all coming together in different phases from different issues of different organ systems affecting appetite. So again, let's go back to that lecture of, you know, the more we keep eating, the better we feel, the better we feel, the more we keep eating. This is all related. We can do something about it. We can limit what we eat. Remember the lecture on protein, on glucose and fat. These are all related to helping you lose that 5 to 10 percent critical mass so that your BMI gets down under 25. All right. I hope this has been helpful for you. I hope you'll share this with your family and your friends. God bless.